Welcome to this video tutorial on the topic Creating a Model for an Implant Case. This video will show you how to design and modify an implant model. In our example, we have already imported the model data via the Serona Connect portal and created a corresponding case in the administration phase. Therefore, we'll now switch directly to the model phase by clicking on the double arrow. The first step in this phase is to set the model axis. We'll follow the recommended standard procedure and align the 3D model optimally in the occlusal, buccal, and mesial views. Then we move to the next step, set jawline. Here we adjust the jawline using the blue dots. Once the tooth numbers are placed on the positions of the implants, the InLab software will calculate the position automatically and we can continue with the next step, which is click scan body head. If the purple dot is placed on the tip of the pyramid, the implant position has already been calculated. Otherwise, you can double click on the tip of the pyramid to start the calculation. You can jump between the individual implant positions via the restoration selector. The purple dot in the center of the scan body indicates now that the position has been defined. This is a prerequisite to later add an implant analog in the model app. Next, we start creating the models. We open the system menu, click on the option Apps, and then on InLab Model 18. The app opens as a separate application. Similar to the InLab software, it has a phase bar and a step menu. Our case was imported automatically, and we'll start in the phase Prepare with the Clean Model tool. By activating the tool, a cut line is automatically drawn in the upper and lower jaw. This line marks the transition between the scanned model data and the future model base. To adjust the line, you can deactivate and activate the upper and lower jaw at any time. The procedure for correcting the cut line is similar to the procedure for adjusting the margin line. Start by double-clicking on a point on the line, then single-click until you reach the point where you want to reconnect with the existing line or where you want to finish the correction. You can complete the correction by double-clicking again. In our case, we have already corrected the cut line of the upper jaw and lower jaw, and we can see here the end result. When cleaning the model, make sure that you leave a sufficient distance to the cut line, particularly in the area around the implants, as you can create a gingival mask in the next step. With this tool, various functions are available to you. By clicking on Reset Models, you can reset the newly defined cut line. By activating the Project Line option, the line you have defined will be projected on the opposite jaw. Using the Model Height slide controller, you can adjust the height of the model base. It should be noted here that for an implant case, the model height should be defined according to the height of the implant analogs. We adjust the height to 11 millimeters. You can do this by either moving the slide controller or entering the desired value directly into the corresponding field. Aside from the height, you can also define the width of the model base. We will calculate our model using an expansion of 2 mm and start the process by clicking on Apply. After creating the model, you can still change the height or width of the model. We won't continue editing the model and will now check the model from different angles. At this point, we end the phase Prepare and move to the next phase, the Design phase, by clicking on the double arrow. In this phase, we'll run through the complete step menu. In the step Create Stumps, there are two tools available. The option Create Stumps can also be used in an implant case if the model includes implants as well as prepared teeth. 
As our case includes only implants, we'll switch to the option Create Analog. To calculate the analogs, we click on Create All Analogs. To review them, we deactivate the upper jaw under Display Objects. Now you have a clear view on the interlocks of the implant analogs. Clicking on one of the analogs allows you to adjust the spacer for the fit of the analog in the model. Now we move on to the next step, Create Gingiva Mask. Here we will move our model to an optimal view. Next, we will activate our tool and start defining the line that determines the dimensions of the gingival mask. The starting point is defined by double-clicking, and we will single-click to create the rest of the path. If you want to correct the line, you can either delete the entire path by clicking on Reset, or click on the right mouse button to reset the last section. As soon as you have reached the starting point again, you can complete the line by double-clicking. The software now automatically starts to calculate the gingiva mask. Creating the gingiva mask for our second implant uses the same procedure, so we will skip the demonstration, so that you now already see the two finished gingiva masks here. To delete an individual gingiva mask, click on the gingiva mask in question and delete it using the reset button. At this point, we will switch to the last step in the design phase, the add supports step. First, we will activate our opposite jaw again and move our model to an ideal position. We have two tools available here. Since we want to set our models in a standard articulator, we forego placing a bar and just activate the Add Connectors option. Setting Support Struts makes it possible to safely keep the models together in final bite position. We move our cursor to the desired spot and determine the position by double-clicking. Now the support strut is marked dark. We rotate our model and place a total of four support struts around the model. By single-clicking on one of the support struts, it is highlighted in green, therefore marking it as active. You can now modify it using the different directional arrows. We have completed the design phase now and move to the last phase, the finalize phase. Depending on the amount of data, the calculation of the final models may take some time. In the finalize phase, three tools are available for us. The form tool can be used to apply, smooth, or remove material. This tool is similar to the form tool in the design phase of the InLab CAD software. Therefore, we will move directly to the second option, the Carve Out Model tool. This tool can be used to carve out the models. The slide controller allows you to define the wall thickness. We will leave this at 3 mm and click on Apply. Next, we activate the Text Label tool and use it to add text to our models. 
To do so, we move the cursor to a suitable location and type in the desired label without clicking again. You can use this tool to assign models to patients, for example. In our case, we write Implant. Double-clicking will confirm the label and allows you to add further labels. By activating the Recess option, the label is recessed instead of being applied on the model. To avoid accidentally adding further text to the models, we will deactivate the tool when finished. Now we can export our model data. We have already opened the Export option of the page palette and deactivated the function Single STL File, as we wish to create a separate STL file for each element. The export is initiated by clicking on Export STL. A new window opens where you will automatically see your disk drives. In our case, we have already created a folder called InLab Implant on the desktop and choose this as the destination to save our files. We name our file Patient1 and then click on Save. Back in the Model app, we minimize our window and check the saved data. The software has exported a total of four STL files for us, one file for the upper and one for the lower jaw, and one file for each gingiva mask. After successfully exporting the STL files, we can close the model app by moving the cursor to the top right-hand corner and clicking the X that appears. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to wish you every success when working with InLab.